When you first open Genesis, you'll see the Welcome to Genesis 2008 screen, which includes a number of tutorial videos that you can play similar to the one you're watching now. These are a lot of them are more specific, such as if you want to learn more about data sets, you would click on that and then play the video. If I close this window, we have uh, another screen that helps you maneuver within Genesis. It has a number of workspaces, recently used workspaces, a number of templates. You can access our synthesis tools directly from this screen, uh, get back to the tutorial videos screen, or open up our examples. We have a, quite a few examples that will be helpful in learning Genesis. But what I'm going to do is close this screen by clicking on OK. And Genesis will open up, as you can see, with a blank schematic screen called SCH1. And on the left, you'll see the workspace tree, which is a very important part of Genesis. It is similar to a project manager. So anything you add into Genesis is going to show up in this workspace tree. Below that uh, is the tune window. But this is the way the default setup uh, Genesis opens when you first open it. Any of these screens can be uh, minimized. As you can see, I can place the workspace tree over in, into my work area. Or if I hover over it and move it, I can also dock it back at the top, such as we have here. I can move it over and dock the workspace tree here and now you see the tune window is actually a tab so there's a number of different ways you can organize the Genesis workspace to suit your needs now the Genesis is a Windows based program so many of the icons that you'll see are going to be very familiar to you such as the open and save and cut and paste and so forth and uh, we don't need to go over those those are standard Windows icons. This button is very important. If you want to get back to the start screen that we showed you in the beginning, you can click on this button and it will take you back to the start screen. Uh, we, also, we have the typical uh, file edit type menus and view. One thing that's important is under the file menu, we have the import and export uh, tabs here so that you can uh, import and export. And especially important are uh, GDS2, uh, Gerber files and DXF files and so forth that if you they're grayed out now because you need a layout you need to generate a layout to be able to do that but these Gerber DXF import export are come standard with the uh, Genesis core so what I want to do to start off is to uh, show you how you would start a design in Genesis and the way, like I said, the way Genesis opens it, it has a blank schematic, and this schematic is, shows up on our workspace tree. So if you click on the schematic, it opens up the schematic toolbar, as you can see at the top. And if you click on this button that looks like an op amp, it opens up the toolbar, the various toolbars that are built into the Genesis core. As you can see, there's a basic one that includes input outputs. Uh, then there's a toolbar for lumped elements such as capacitors, inductors. Then there's the linear toolbar, the nonlinear toolbar, which are spice-like elements. There's a system toolbar, which is spectrosis, which are behavioral models. And then we have a number of other uh, distributed type models such as microstrip and strip line type toolbars. And so if you click on any one of these toolbar uh, icons that opens up another toolbar as shown here this is uh, I clicked on the capacitor that's the lump toolbar and you can actually move these down into your schematic area if you desire and, pos and position the toolbar in a convenient place on your schematic and then you can start by placing parts you just click on any part and then drop it on to the schematic. And I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and to see the uh, part a little bit better. Now an alternative way, as you can see on the right, there's what we call the part selector. And it's the current library is EagleWare. This part selector duplicates our toolbars that I showed you at the top, but they are in more of a tabular format. So you can sort these, though, if I wanted to 
uh, sort it by uh, the lump toolbar, I can, under category, pull up lumped, and here is all the lumped elements. Now, if I want to sort it further, let's say I just want to see inductors, then I can type out an inductor filter by, and it gives me the various inductors that are available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can click on the inductor here and place it on my schematic as well. So you can, there's two ways to be able to pull parts. Now a third way is we have shortcuts and you can look in the Genesis help for those, but we have shortcuts such as if you push L on your keyboard, that will give you an inductor or C is a capacitor. So you can quickly build up schematics that way as well. Also in the part selector, we have, if you look at the libraries, there's a number of different libraries for manufacturers, and these include uh, S-parameter parts, uh, SPICE parts, and some system-level behavioral models. You can also create your own library. Uh, I actually have a, a number of different, uh, like here's a dual-band demo, which, is, which has parts in it for a specific uh, demo, and so you can create custom libraries for uh, for your parts that you may use in your designs. So all, another feature that we have on all of the windows such as the part selector, what we call docking windows, is an auto hide feature and this is a, this button that looks like a push pin. If you click on that it will automatically hide into a tab and then it will close and open when you need it. We also have a button at the top that will hide all of the dockers at once. If you click on this button it will hide them all and it gives you the complete window as a schematic workspace and this gives you a lot more room to work. So let's finish our design here. I put down an inductor. Uh, I have a capacitor here. I'm going to build a very simple low pass filter and our, my capa capacitor is horizontal. I'd like to rotate that. So you can do that. There's a shortcut F3 on the keyboard or we have these icons up here that allow you to rotate and it shows you that you can also push SF3. So if I click that, it'll rotate. I can then position this under the inductor and then I can either just drag the two together to connect them such as that and then they will stay connected or if I hold Alt on my keyboard and move the parts, then they will disconnect. Then I can hover over any of the nodes, and when the cursor changes to what looks like an up arrow, you can just draw a line, and you don't have to select a wire. It just automatically knows that you want to place a wire when you hover over a node.